Dear participants and dear guests, I have a huge uh, honor to open our first session of invited talks. And this first session is devoted to women in electrical engineering and computer science. Till now, this was always the last session. This is the first year we have it as a first session. And I would like to announce Professor Milos Djuric as first speaker with an interesting topic on Hedy Lamar and frequency hoping. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope I've got my uh, uh, the presentation actually, not the PowerPoint presentation. So the topic I'm about to present uh, is dedicated to Hedy Lamar and frequency hopping process. As you can see, I'm from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, University of Belgrade. Uh, just one, so should I give you a mark whilst changing the slide? So uh, let us go and focus on some introductory uh, remarks. So Hedy Lamar uh, was extremely famous uh, in the period which is uh, better known as the golden age of Hollywood. Her full name, Hedy Kiesler Markey, at the time of the invention of the secret communication system uh, for frequency hopping. So she was actually the inventress of that system. Um, now, uh, she was, according to Jewish women, a comprehensive historical encyclopedia. Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler, that is Hedy Lamar, uh, was Austrian film star, well known as an exotic beauty and more often than not represented as a foreign temptress in Hollywood generated films. Um, we can just skip this one. So, and now we may also focus on Lamar's Jewish identity. So she was born as Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler, the daughter of Gertrude Trude Lichtwitz and Emil Kiesler. Um, in her uh, early uh, age, she received the best education possible at the Döblinger Metten Mittelschule, and she was uh, she actually remembered all those memorable walks with her father in the Wienerwald, and lovely and beautiful piano lessons with her talented mother. Now. Even in the early age, she was aware uh, of her love uh, and her being fond of acting. And literally, she said that she actually had fallen in love with acting. The first encounter with acting was under the auspices of Professor Arndt in Vienna. And her first appearance was in Georg Jacobi's Gold on the Street, originally Geld auf der Straße in 1930. She pursued her acting career under the famed Jewish theater director, Max Reinhardt, uh, and with him, she generated the stage production of The Weaker Sex. At that particular time, she was described as the gorgeous and glamorous Hollywood star of the 1930s and 1940s. But the turning point was Gustav Makati's 1933 Czech film, Czech film, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, Ecstase, Ecstasy. According to Ruth Barton and her entry uh, of Hedy Lamar in Jewish Women's Archive, best remembered in the film history due to the film scenes in which the teenage Lamar runs naked through the woods before plunging for a dip into a lake and simulates orgasm with her lover. The thing which was the most important at that time was a close-up of Hedwig Kiesler's face in which she seems to experience an orgasm. The, another turning point was her Friedrich Fritz Mandel. According to some publicly available sources and records, the third richest man in Austria, and according to idle gossip, which is at best malicious always. That was the reason why she married uh, Fritz Mandel because she was, uh, because of his uh, being well off and his immense wealth. But on the contrary, it was just the opposite. Her Mandel became obsessed with Paddy Lamar. And that's why we also may uh, 
come across the disapproval of Hedy's parents, which might be the case primarily due to Fritz Mandel's tight connection with Duce Benito Mussolini and Führer Adolf Hitler, but they could not prevent her from marrying Mandel. Ultimately, on the 10th of August 1933, at the age of 18, Hedwig Kiesler married Friedrich Fritz Mandel, who was 33 years old. After that, she married six times. But the ultimate outcome of this love story was that she fled her loveless marriage to become a Hollywood actress. Borrowing one Shakespearean or Shakespeare motivated metaphor, the stuff that dreams are made of, so I borrowed that metaphor, the stuff that movies are made of, we may focus further on Lamar's unusual twists and turns in the form of the metaphorical voyage from Vienna to Hollywood. According to her contemporaries, Lamar's, Lamar was so beautiful that everybody would stop talking when she came into a room. She was a screen goddess. And according to her own words, the best you have anyway, as a sort of some semi-moto. Now, we've got the fabulous legacy of Hedy Lamar on her journey from a good Viennese Jewish girl arriving in Hollywood to eccentric, visionary, sublime, elegant, smart, temptress. And due to her uh, Austrian, or better still, and more precisely, German accent, she received those roles of temptresses, uh, exotic foreign temptresses, and exotic goddesses. Now, starting from the center and working outwards, let us focus further on Hedy Lamar's frequency hopping. She became interested in inventions and uh, different sorts of uh, discoveries as a child, primarily inspired by her father. She is said to have taken a musical clock apart, so she dis disassembled that musical clock at the age of five in order to comprehend the mechanism of that clock, so in order to understand how it works. Uh, in the continuation of her childhood, she scribbled various diagrams and distinct charts in her notebooks. And according to Kenneth Anger, even in Hollywood, she was not a very social person, unlike some popular beliefs that she likes to go out with friends. She preferred staying at home and inventing. Even in Hollywood, she set up a mini laboratory with a chemistry set, which led to her groundbreaking discovery. At that particular period, she met George Anteil, or in German, Georg Anteil, the enfant terrible of the American music scene, the celebrated and controversial uh, creator of Ballet Mécanique. Together with Antail, she received a US patent number for their invention. This is just a sketch of this, uh, uh, this uh, invention. Now, the main question which might be posed is how did a 1940s actress and avant-garde composer create a path for communication technology? The plausible answer might be tackled by one observation that sometimes inventions have surprising origins and then we come across serendipity. Lamar and Antile would spend many hours in Hedy Lamar's villa utilizing the old matches and a silver matchbox which they would place out on a carpet, utilizing them in order to model their invention and trying to move further towards the idea of frequency hopping. Hedy Lamar as frequency hopping star. At that particular period, since she did not possess the formal training and formal education in the field of science and engineering, for that matter, she thought that this invention and this action, so to say, in laboratory might be the key for the gate of science. 
or better still, the domain in which she may be finally recognized as a scientist. At the very beginning, she used the German compound word Frequenzspunktverwahren for frequency hopping process, which was later dubbed simply frequency hopping. And according to some uh, authors, it was the road paved to Bluetooth technology and Wi-Fi, and today we can read about her Iman's influence on these popular technologies. Now, from simple structures to complex ideas delving into spread spectrum and frequency hopping, I shan't bother you with technical details uh, in connection with frequency hopping spread spectrum, but this is just one, broadly speaking, one extremely broad definition taken from Wikipedia, according to which frequency hopping spread spectrum might be defined as a method of transmitting radio signals by means of rapidly changing the carrier frequency among many distinct frequencies occupying, so taking, a large spectral band. And these changes being controlled by code known to both a transmitter and a receiver. Uh, its main use, according to Wikipedia, is to avoid interference, to prevent eavesdropping, and to make possible code division, multiple access communications. Uh, if we focus on the text of the paper, so, which is uh, freely available thanks to Google Documents and Google Patents database, we might take as a starting point discourse analysis, text linguistics and register analysis, according to which one may, may perform different sorts of analysis of this text. Uh, this text pertains, it is actually a subset of set of formal English uh, language, or better still, legalese, so legal English, which has one definite structure, and that is the structure of a text, of a patent text. Uh, here is the text of a patent. Just, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. So, uh, these are some concluding remarks. Uh, this small-scale investigation was primarily descriptively oriented. In the history of frequency hopping, it might be asserted that Hedy Lamar was the most glamorous name associated with frequency hopping. Uh, she led a sort of dual life, that of an actress and that of an inventor or engineer. It included Lamar's captivating character, and her legacy is actually contained within the patent. In this small scale analysis, I have also tried to re-examine frequency hopping from purely and merely historical perspective and based solely on descriptive accounts on the literature. However, Hedy Lamar remains one of the best contributors and the, inve the inventress of frequency hopping. And finally, since I come from the, the field of humanities, I always like to acknowledge publicly the help of many people. So I would first like to express my gratitude to Professor Dr. Milesa Srečković from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering University of Belgrade, who guided me through the maze of serendipity Zemblanity and Benfredipity. Professor Milesa Srečković provided me with the initial idea of exploring Hedy Lamar and frequency hopping. In addition to this, she provided me with some memorable examples from electrical engineering and linguistic domains. Ich danke ihr für ihre Unterstützung in allen Dingen. My boundless thanks go to Professor Dr. Nadica Milković and my task of exploring the intricacies and complexities of the inventress Hedy Lamar and her personality has been eased by generous help of Professor Nadica Milković, who kindly read all my initial notes and offered more than valuable suggestions. 
My gratitude goes to Professor Dr. Pedag Pejovic, who gave his time and patience to enhance and improve my literacy in the domain of the engineering aspects of frequency hopping. Professor Pejovic, a stern and lenient critic, is a visionary and an inexhaustible source of academic inspiration. Finally, I would also like to offer my thanks to Dr. Emma Beitman from the Jewish Women's Archives and Dr. Jessica Stepnowski from the American Physical Society for providing me uh, the permission to use, to utilize the copyrighted material and include it both in my presentation and in my written paper. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, Professor Judith, <clears throat> I would kindly ask our organizational board to play a short video that you have prepared uh, for this presentation, if you agree. And in the meantime, I would like to express my gratitude that someone actually um, dived into this um, interesting topic in interesting person. I'll read you something pretty. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, alternative motives. Do good anyway. The biggest people with the biggest ideas can be shut down by the smallest people with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. Give the world the best to have and you'll be kicked into the sea. Give the world the best you've got anyway. Um, Professor Juric, am I right? This is her um, voice, original voice of Hedy Lamar. I have one short question because we have time for it. And um, I'm very curious about your opinion because you have read a lot of materials and you're now very, now very well know the, the life and work of Hedy Lamar. Who was she in the end, actress or inventress? Well, she was both, actually. She, uh, in some way, although it is hard to believe that, uh, she despised acting. She even had that quotation that it is not difficult to be glamorous and beautiful. You just stand there and do nothing uh, and be stupid and you are a beautiful girl. That, that was, well, this is a paraphrase of her quotation, actually. But uh, in, in some sort, she despised acting and film art. However, she was well aware that uh, acting can provide her with financial funds, uh, not only for, for some uh, high life uh, in Hollywood at that particular time, but also for, uh, to, to provide her with... Uh, with idleness, you know, because in order to to philosophize, one has to be, uh, you know, he has or he or she has to uh, be uh, uh, filled with all other needs uh, that make up our everyday life. So she was provided uh, with uh, financial assets uh, for her inventions as well. So I think she was both. I, I wouldn't evaluate on that. She was both, definitely. Thank you, I Professor. Hope I have a, I have a question. <laughs> we, we have one more question from the audience. Professor Alec Kavcic is um, in, at the University of Belgrade, and he has one question for you. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I'm curious. Today, with hindsight, we know frequency hopping is a method to hide your signal 
over several frequencies and large frequency domain, you can avoid jamming that way. What was her motivation to invent that in the 1930s, 40s? I mean, did well, they really need this back then? What was, uh, what, what triggered it? The main or, motivation, or, which is mentioned in the written version of the paper, but we haven't got time for the whole um, paper and during the presentation, is that she somehow felt some, she had some guilty conscience or something like that. She, she fled from Europe and she wanted to help Europe. So she wanted to contribute to American uh, and allied forces and she approached uh, some clerk, some uh, official from the patent office. However, she was a woman at that time and uh, there were so many misogynistic uh, tendencies around uh, Hollywood and the United States of America as well. So she desperately needed a partner who would help her and who would provide the mechanical part of the invention. So the main motivation was to help Americans in World War II. And that is something which she ex explicitly mentioned in the text of the patent, which was entitled a Secret Communication Device. Actually, yeah, it would have helped, uh, but, but the history is uh, actually American tanks started using frequency modulation, which was at that point good enough to avoid listening by any other uh, power. So, so had all the others had frequency mod modulation, then the U.S. Army would have had to resort to frequency hopping. Well, I really can't. <laughs> I really can't uh, discuss uh, the, the genuine motivation. Uh, she, she really was uh, an inventor, and of course, there are some uh, sources that uh, claim that there were allegedly multiple inventors in the domain of frequency hopping. And we cannot definitely know whether she was informed from her ex-husband, Fritz, Fritz Mandel, who was surrounded by experts in his castle and who was uh, an ammunition person in Hitler's Germany. So perhaps she got some ideas from that, but I really can't say that for uh, as, as some definite answer. Thank you. Um Professor Juric, and um, you, you've got a very com nice compliments in the chat box. Maybe you should check them later. Right. Um, also one link 